What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we were able to hook up our embers machines here. Uh, we have a melter that was taking in iron ore and melting it down into our molten iron. So now we have the task of trying to figure out how we're going to take that molten iron and turn it into something useful like iron ingots. Right. So back to the book here. Uh, so we finished up on this page here, setting this whole portion of this up. So the next stop, uh, I guess the next page is talking about, uh, seeing as embers has no GUI or GUI interfaces. They want us to make these gauges so we can see different things that are happening. Um, this is talking about the melter stuff. Once the melter has some molten metal inside, attach a fluid transfer node to one side on the top half and connect it to a stamp base with transfer pipes place a stamper two blocks above the stamp base with the front facing downwards like you would push like you would with the piston if you wanted to push down lastly put a ember receptor on the stamper and give it some ember put a bar or a plate stamp in the stamper and it should begin operating okay so we need to make two different machines we have to make this fluid transfer system here we have to make another one of these receptors uh, and then we have to make a bar or a plate stamp, probably a bar stamp. So let's take a look at this. Uh, I've already looked at a couple of these things that we need to do. We need the stamp base. So that is some copper, some carbonate plates and some carbonate bricks. The stamper itself is four copper ingots, three carbonate plates and one carbonate brick. All right. How much copper do we have? Two, not enough. <laughs> Uh, we still have a little bit of molten copper left in here. Uh, we do need to put the dirt pipes on there or whatever so it can cool down and actually make the ingots. So that's another thing we need to do is go farm yet more dirt. I know there are better ways of making pipes or I guess these cooling things. We don't have access to them right now as far as I understand it. So we have six more of these. Is that going to do anything for us? We just place them right on top of here. They catch fire and then stuff happens. This cools down a little bit and then it can make another ingot. All right, we'll put two more down. <laughs> Are you going to do something here? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how much cooling it needs in order to make another ingot. But we got one. So we have a total of three. <laughs> maybe that'll be enough to get a few more ingots made. I don't know. Is it 200 millibuckets equals one copper ingot in this setup? I thought it was 144. But we have an even 600. I don't know how that all works. So it looks like with that amount of dirt that we put on there, we can get one ingot. That's not enough. Okay, so I'm getting... Yeah, I'm going to need to go farm some more dirt, I guess. Uh, so we can make more of those cables, get some more copper going. I probably want to get some more copper ore in here, get some more molten copper made. I'm pretty sure we had more copper around here. Yeah, we do right here. Uh, I do believe we had to crush that up or I guess grind it in this grinder here to double it and put the dust in through here. So I guess that's what I'm going to work on for the next little bit. Try to get some more copper going. We'll make these other bits and pieces that we need and then we'll be back. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I made the stamp base, the stamper. We have an ember receptor and then we also have a bar stamp. This is with four of those carbonite things. These up here. Yeah, just uh, four of those equals one of the raw ones and you smelt it in the furnace. So it's pretty easy to do. So stamp base, this needs to be on the bottom. I don't I don't really know like how far away this thing needs to or can be from like our ember emitter. Like should I stick it over here? Is that going to reach over? I honestly don't know. I guess we'll find out. So we'll put that there. A stamper, this says it has to be placed like a piston two blocks above. So I assume like that is what we want. Is that... Right? I guess. I don't know. So we need a bar stamp. I guess right like that. <laughs> uh, all right. And then let's see. We need an ember receptor, which I guess is going to go up here. We'll need our tinker hammer. So we shift right click on this and right click on this. I think. <laughs> okay. Also, we need to get the fluid out of this thing and over here. You know what? I'm just realizing we aren't going to have enough transfer pipe. So let's go look and see if we can make some of that. Uh, transfer pipe. 
I don't think this stuff is expensive, is it? So we have carmenite brick and two pieces of glass. I don't remember. We don't. I was going to say, I don't remember if we have enough of that stuff. We absolutely do not. So let's go ahead and do one of those numbers. So that should be six of those. So we need two pieces of glass cooked up. I can go and start on that. Uh, one of these. Now, between last clip and now... Oh, you know what? I thought I got rid of these buttons. <laughs> I was going to say, between last clip and now, I thought I went and I turned these buttons off. Yeah, I accidentally pressed this button. I was trying to do this one here so I could switch between recipes. I clicked this one. All the items in my inventory disappeared. Some of them went into this chest. Some of them went into this chest. Well, maybe not that one. And some of them went into this chest. Like, my items just went away. <laughs> I was like, what the heck's going on? Yeah, that button right here is deposit into nearby inventories, nearby chests. So it just takes everything out of your, your inventory and just starts putting them all over the place. I don't like that functionality. I thought I had turned it off, but apparently I had missed up. Or I missed like one option to turn that off. I believe that's from Quark. Anyway, uh, so here's our second piece of glass. Are these things done cooking up? Oh, they're almost there. So I guess we can kind of come down here and figure out how we're going to run this pipe because I don't really want to run it down here. Uh, so that needs to connect to this thing. Uh, we have three of these. Mm, do I go down and then under and then up? That might be what we end up doing. And this goes here, I would imagine. Whoa, okay. <laughs> I already clicked in that. That lags for a little bit. Yeah, that's got the molten metal in there. Uh, all right, so let's finish this up. Yeah, these are all done, so we can make the rest of our transfer pipes here. Oh, I made one too many, but that's fine. So we got that, this, and this, and there is eight more transfer pipe. That should work just fine. Yeah, I think we'll, well... I guess we could run it up above and over. That might be better now that I think on it. So something like that. So we should start getting iron over here. Now this doesn't have any speed upgrades in it. So it's going to be searching the entire pipe network. And it's going to take it a minute. And then it's going to be like, oh, here's a spot. And it's going to dump in, I guess, uh, a bucket's worth of iron over here. So this tank says it has molten iron in it. Uh... Oh, you know what? This needs more embers, doesn't it? Okay, so let's put some of those in there. Maybe that's all we're missing. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it looks like things are happening. Ooh. So we got our first iron ingot. Oh, okay, so that's kind of cool. It's going around looping and then going over here. Now, I wonder, since it's going, like, a lot further, does it have a loss on power? Hmm. I don't know, but it seems to be working just fine. Does it transfer the power slower because it has to go further? And yeah, these are things I just don't know. But anyway, we have seven iron ingots, which is amazing. Yeah, all the stuff is out of there. We still have a little bit left in this thing. Uh, this tank still has 856 millibuckets over here. Okay, so we should be getting all of the iron out. So I guess the next step is, is to figure out what we can do with this iron and then do something with it. All right, guys, so I think the next step, according to the book here, is to get ourselves a Coke oven. So we're going to have to go to the nether. In order to do that, it says vanilla progression of making an iron pickaxe to get a diamond pickaxe to get obsidian to build the portal. Well, we could get buckets of lava, I suppose, and do it that way. Actually, I'm not even sure if there's a way for us to make a bucket yet. We might be able to do that just with straight iron ingots. I haven't checked it out. But anyway, I wanted to make the reinforced pickaxe. Yeah, this one, the reinforced iron pickaxe. I think this one will serve us pretty well. I don't know if this will mine everything an iron pickaxe will, or if this will mine obsidian, or how this works, but I want to check this one out. So in order to do that, we need a reinforced stone, which we've been making before to make the reinforced pickaxe, uh, plus iron, though. So we need three iron plus three of the reinforced stone. So theoretically, I if I had to guess, I would say that's going to be better than an iron pickaxe, but I don't know. We will find out. Okay, so there is iron, there is that, and there is some reinforced iron ingots. Cool. So now we need to get ourselves a little bit of stick action going on. There's that and that. Creepers still be exploding out there. All right, and there's that. And there is a reinforced iron pickaxe. 
I am kind of curious just to test and see what the differences are between the two, like how much faster it is, if it's any faster, or if it just has a higher mining level or more durability. Honestly, don't really know much about these two. So let's go find out as we do down in our branch mine by doing a little bit of test mining. Hopefully it will be a little bit faster. Uh, let's go over here. Okay, so we'll try the regular one. So that mines stone pretty decently fast. And then the new one, that's faster. That might be diamond pickaxe speed now. Or is that iron pickaxe speed? I'm not entirely sure now that I think about it. <laughs> okay, well I guess we should test mining level next. So let's go all the way down to the bottom here. I think we might have had some ores exposed that I couldn't mine previously, but let's check it out. Maybe, yeah, we have redstone here. It says we can mine it with this. We cannot mine it with this. So this is diamond mining level here. Awesome. All right, so we got a bunch of lava around nearby. I think I need to start branch mining, finding diamonds, maybe find some lava. I guess we should also check out and see uh, how to make a bucket. Is there anything special about this that we need to know about? Nope, that is just a regular vanilla bucket recipe. So I guess we can go ahead and make one of those. I hear lava all around. So if I just grab some water, a bucket of water, right? I can dump it on there and make obsidian. That's probably going to be our next step here. Uh, so three more iron to make a bucket. There it is. All right, so I think the game's going to be changing just a little bit now. That we have access to this stuff at least it feels like it will be uh, i'll put that pickaxe uh, <laughs> off the hot bar i don't need the old and busted one all right there's that food nope nope other chest i really need to rearrange these chests we need more room in here really uh i need a place to put these embers and i don't really have a spot for that i guess whoa, whoa, whoa. i guess i'll put it down here for now like so and this atmospheric gauge and these island pipes, yeah, we're really running out of space. All right, I guess we'll do something like that. Anyway, guys, let me go ahead and start, uh, well, I guess I should find some water. But yeah, let me go ahead and start mining. Hopefully, we'll find some diamonds. Hopefully, we'll get some stuff going on, and we'll be right back. Oh, man, guys, so I've been at this for a little while now. Uh, it turns out this pickaxe can mine diamonds, but it cannot mine obsidian, right? So... This is kind of the poke hole mine I've been doing so far. Yeah, I've been at this for a little bit. I've also explored some caves nearby. Like there's a ravine right here. Uh, yeah, this ravine right here. Uh, there was water going everywhere. It kind of like poked around. I was hoping to find diamonds in the walls and stuff. No such luck. Uh, I found a few other caves around. But yeah, this is our first actual diamonds. And it's right in the middle of our path here. <laughs> So it looks like we are going to get full eight diamonds. Unfortunately, we don't have fortune. Actually, we could get, I was gonna say, we could get nine, because you can get nine in one bane. But yeah, it looks like we got eight. Eight is plenty. That's all we're looking for. We just need a way to mine obsidian. That makes me happy. But since I already dug all the way down here, I might as well do one final pull coal just to finish this up. Although I think diamonds, I don't know. Is it only like one? Or or one vein of diamonds can spawn per chunk. I don't know how that works, but I feel like if you find diamonds, you're not going to find another thing of diamonds right next to it unless they're on chunk borders. I, I seem to recall something like that. Anyway, so there's a lot of ores that I've left in this mine. The only thing I've been interested in thus far is finding diamonds. And now that we have that, we can make ourselves a diamond pickaxe and then mine some obsidian. So yes, that makes me very happy that I don't have to continue to branch mine or poke hole mine any further to get such things. <laughs> uh, I've been finding a whole lot of other ores. Also, I've seen that we have a few different types of coal in here. I think we've seen this stuff before. This actually turns into uh, six torches, right? This other stuff turns into eight torches. So yes, there's a couple different types of coal that are different that I found that can turn into more torches than normal. They also have a longer burn time, right? So that's kind of cool. Anyway, I wanted to make our first diamond pickaxe together and there it is, nice. All right, so now we have a vanilla diamond pickaxe and I got a lot of stuff on me. We need to start throwing some things away. In fact, I could probably take things out of here like these stairs 
and this bow that I got off a skeleton at some point. Yeah, I don't think we need those on us, really. I would like to put some of these other things away. Now, I did find magnetite ore. I'm not sure if that also turns into iron, because we found some other types of uh, ores that turn just into iron, right? So maybe that's one of them. Uh, anything else in here I can get rid of quickly? And I don't really want to get rid of the andesite, but we might have to. I guess we'll do that. Let's get rid of those. I kind of want to put, like, these diamonds away, and, like, a stack of that lapis away. There's plenty of redstone to be had nearby, so I don't think we have to worry about hoarding that. I could make another chest as well. That's another thing. So this trash can, I don't remember if we talked about that or not. This is a part of FTB Utilities. So by default, you get a trash can always available. So if you get any junk in your inventory, you can just click it in here. And as soon as you press escape on there, that item's deleted. But yeah, it gives you a little bit of time here. You can click something and be like, oh, wait, no, I don't want that trash. And then pull it back out, right? So that's kind of a cool feature. I do like it. Uh, it looks like we also got niter. Hmm. Okay, yeah, a few different things. Right, so I guess the next step, now that we have this diamond pickaxe, oh, you know, I wanted to get rid of those pressure plates as well. Now that we have this diamond pickaxe is that we can mine up that obsidian and then make ourselves another portal. Another thing I haven't looked at so far is a flint and steel, something we can make. What I do here? Got a spot there that needs a torch. Uh, yeah, so I think under here is lava. Yeah, there's plenty of lava nearby. So I should be able to mine out some of the subsidian, just place it on the water and get that going. Let's take a look at flint and steel. Is there anything special about this that we need to know? Nope, just iron and flint. Okay, that's nice. You can also find it in the nether fortress dungeon chests. All right, so I'll go ahead and make one of those and we can light up our portal. But first things first, let me go ahead and take the time, mine out the subsidian, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I got the obsidian all mined out. We're down here in our main tunnel of our branch mine. I'm kind of putting it a little further away from our base, as we do, because the nether portal is annoying. I don't want to keep putting it out every single time. Uh, so here's a flint and steel that I made. We have, like, I think two pieces of iron remaining now. I had to make a few of these reinforced iron pickaxes before we found those diamonds. Yeah, I almost think maybe I should keep my diamond pickaxe here. I can't imagine anything in the nether is going to be diamond level that we're going to need to mine, except for, like, maybe the ardite and stuff. I made another chest up here, kind of separated our ores out. I guess I'll put our diamond pickaxe here. Maybe anything else that's a value, a water bucket. Don't really need to take that to the nether with us. Uh, sticks we should probably take with some coal. I should imagine we might want to put a trail of torches. Let's do that. Uh, do we need sticks for anything else? Maybe not. All right, so we got plenty of cobblestone to protect our portal. We have a flint and steel. I'm going to take a chest with me as well uh, so we can place the flint and steel there. I guess we can just pee it on the wall using our place item and world functionality. Uh, reinforced pickaxe. I think we're good to go. All right, so let's get going to the nether for the very first time in this mod pack. Uh, yeah, I'm bringing carrot juice as our food. Because there's plenty of saturation, and then we have these raspberries and blueberries that we can nom on to reset the spice of life. All right, so through here, here we go. I don't know if there is any nether mods in here that's going to make, like, difficult monsters. I think there's quark, and it might have, like... The specters or whatever those things are here. Oh, the nether is going to be fantastic with the uh, hardcore light mod or whatever that is. Hardcore darkness. Okay, so we have another fortress pretty quickly. I hear a ghast. I want to get our nether portal protected, so let's do that. All right, that should be pretty good in case a gas decides to send a fireball our way anytime soon. Uh, probably want to make the floor out of the cobblestone as well, because nether rack will blow up to the fireballs and the cobblestone will not. Yeah, the gas is right there. Okay. So, yep, very important to protect your portal. As you do, um, I think something like that should be fine. I'll probably want to expand out our floor here a little bit, place down some blocks, and get this kind of 
squared away. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick, and then we'll be back in. Hopefully, we'll be able to start exploring the nether just a little bit. I kind of feel like we do want to go over to the fortress, though. Oop. I feel like we do want to go to that fortress, though, and get ourselves stuff so we can start brewing potions. I would like to get ourselves fire resistance potions. Pretty important for the nether, and especially for fighting blaze and whatnot. Anyway, let me continue this on, and we'll be back. All right, guys, so yes, we are not in the nether right now. <laughs> I need to get myself a bow and arrows, right? Uh, there are a lot of blaze in the nether who are trying to aggro me and trying to shoot fireballs at me Yeah, we need a way to defend ourselves. So I know there's some chickens over here and because of Is it Batania? I think it might be Batania One of the mods in this mod pack allows monsters or I guess chickens for instance to shed Yeah, so anyway, we're able to get feathers without having to kill our chicken friends uh, I don't know if there's any other chickens around. I just seen this little bit of animals over here on the minimap a lot So I've come over there to get eggs before so I can also make some of that other stuff uh, The brick things that we're doing up here because that is one of the recipes that you can use eggs for that Anyway, uh, so we have some feathers. We have some flint and we have some sticks. That is a good recipe Whoop not that that is a recipe to make ourselves some arrows. So let's put those in there all right, so now we have 17. Hopefully that'll get us to where we need to be anyway. That away, that away. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, I had to kill myself one of those golem things. I can't remember. What mod is this from? Core stone? Core stone. Unfortunately, it doesn't say the mod tool tip in our inventory here. We need to get that one mod that's from embers. Oh, that is an embers. Okay, so I have played a mod pack before that's had embers in it. I've just never actually used the embers mod at all. All right, let's eat one of these foods. Uh, we need just a little bit more food here. There we go. So now our health comes back. Very good. All right, so let's go to the nether, and I'll show you guys what we've done there. So I continued building that little shack, <laughs> the little uh, cobblestone room around our portal, just to make sure that monsters aren't going to come get us. Uh... Yeah, gas won't be able to shoot fireballs at our portal. Our portal is pretty much safe here, but I did forget to put down our chest. Place the chest here and put our flint and steel in there in case we need it. Uh, so yes, off this direction here, I put a little wall. I don't know why. I guess just in case fireball makes it over here and doesn't get into our room. Uh, I made a pathway over to this nether rack, and the idea is to go up here, climb up this way, and then bridge over to the fortress. So I've made the bridge, <laughs> first of all, over to our nether rack area. I've dug the tunnel up here. We had a little incident with lava. It wasn't that big of a deal. I was able to get rid of the lava without taking any damage. And now we come up here. Now the problem is, yeah, there's blaze that keep spawning over here. And as I'm digging out, they're coming towards me. And I'm afraid they're going to hit me, knock me off into the lava down below. And I don't want anything to do with that. It looks like... We're actually fine right now. There aren't any blaze nearby, which is very lucky for us for building this bridge, but we're definitely going to want something in the future to prevent blaze from getting us at all. Uh, so I will go ahead, do some safety reels here. Definitely want to be able to get over here safely without falling off of this. And just one block high should be enough. I mean, we could have gone cheaper with this and done slabs, but... Honestly, I think full cobblestone blocks is just fine for our purpose here. Cobblestone isn't like super expensive. All right, so we made it over to the fortress. Nice. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put this stuff around. What is this thing? It's like if it's a demon sheep from Abyssal Craft. Did I just see something like shoot me? Is that okay? I thought I saw something shooting over at me. I'm not sure what that was that I saw. Okay, well, this part of the fortress just kind of ends. It's just a random little section that isn't connected to anything. That's weird. Yeah, see how that blaze is over there flying up? Yeah, those guys aggro from far away. They kind of just see you. They float around, and when they get close enough, they will shoot at you. <laughs> I kind of want to bring one close enough so I can make a brew stand. Hopefully we can get it to drop a blaze rod. Doing it back up a little bit. Get out of its range so it won't shoot me. But I do want to keep it on here 
So you can potentially collect this blaze right. Yeah, look at it. Oh, what are you? A rat wraith? Oh my goodness. And there's another one coming too. Okay, these guys don't get knocked back at all. Scary. Okay, well now I'm on fire. Uh, I'm just gonna sit here for a moment. Okay, what I really need to do, whoop, there's another blaze down there. Let's eat these things. We good? Ah, uh, come on, heal me up further. <laughs> oh, this is scary. Okay, so I ate another one of those. Uh, this is almost ready to go. It's not quite. What do we get here? Soul beta. Those are probably useful for something, right? I'm not sure what those are useful for. Check that out here in a little bit. Still not enough blueberry being eaten so it can have the full carry juice. All right, there we go. That should be good. Can I eat the carrot juice now? There it is. Awesome. All right. Uh, so bow and arrow. Let's get that ready. How many more arrows do we have? We have 16 still. Get this guy. Okay, he did drop a blaze rod. Nice. Oh, no, that was a, a heart thing. Um, I'm not sure the best way to do this. I don't want to get shot by the blaze. I kind of want to knock him into a spot where I can get his blaze rod. If I come down here, he'll fly up a little bit. What are you doing, guy? Ah, I can't see down there and see what's going on. Now, wasn't there a blaze in here? Oh, I guess there was a little bit ago. That might have been one of these other ones. That might have been one of these guys. Okay, there's like three of them there now. Does this thing turn into anything useful? Okay, so that turns into magma cream. That's good. That'll give us our fire resistance. Now, did that drop a blaze rod? Yes, it did. Okay, I need that blaze rod so we can make the brew stand. Whoop. All right, let's go over there and see if we can arrow these guys. Okay, so we got a couple of blaze rods. I'm happy with this. <laughs> I'm so freaked out right now. I don't want to die and lose all my stuff in the nether and have to come back here empty handed. That's not good. Now that we have these blaze rods, yeah, we can go ahead, uh, make a brewing stand unless that recipe has been changed. Oh, we need nether wart too, don't we? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Okay, well, let's go drop this stuff off. I'll go collect some nether wart. We'll brew up some fire resist potions and then we should be safe from at least the blaze here in the nether. Well, all right guys, I ended up getting five blaze rods and I kind of searched that nether fortress around for a little while. I put torches everywhere and I wasn't able to find one of those little rooms with the stairs that has the nether ward on either side. So we might even have to go and find ourselves a different nether fortress, unfortunately. Yeah, not an easy thing getting that nether ward. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I tell you what, the video is getting long. We're going to go and wrap it up here for today. We made some pretty good progress. We got iron. We got to the nether. Yeah, we got blaze rods for a brew stand, which the recipe is not modified, by the way. So, yeah, it's just a regular brew stand. All we need is just that nether ward, and then we can be a little bit more safe in the nether. But anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.